Hi guys, I hope everyone's having a great day. This is Rick and I thought it was high time I did a gardening video update. Right then, what's been happening? Well, lots and lots has been happening. I'll start indoors here. And uh, it's been about two weeks now since I did, did the last video update. And uh, already we've had a big crop of uh, tomatoes. I was gonna say strawberries then. Tomatoes from the hydroponics. We've got uh, quite a few now that are going red. And uh, we had a big bunch of them here that we've, we've, we've picked most of them now um, from that particular bunch. But everywhere you look on the hydroponics, there are just hundreds and hundreds of these uh, tomato plants, which is really, really good, as you can see. Now, what I have been noticing with these, uh, the four main tomato plants, is that the closer they are to the door, so this tomato plant here has the most tomatoes on it and is shortest. And as, it's just a theory I'm working with, but as the tomato plants move away, from the main source of light. I mean, obviously there's still a lot of light in here, but uh, this one tucked up in the corner here, it's nowhere near the south facing windows here. And that plant has grown the tallest, but it's producing the least number of flowers. It still has got some uh, flowers on it, but uh, nowhere near as many as the one next to it. So my theory is the light, uh, the, you know, this, this one's not getting anywhere near as much light as this one, therefore it's not producing uh, as much. I don't know, I, I might be wrong. But uh, these ones are absolutely, uh, all of the, the tomatoes now are coming on beautifully. We've got uh, f sort of full vines worth. Oh, the little marigolds are coming out as well, which uh, are a very, very good companion plant for tomatoes. My um, lettuce cucumber, this is doing fabulously. This is, uh, I probably mentioned it before, it's an 18th century uh, cucumber and what it does it produces baseball shaped yellow cucumbers and uh, or lemon colored uh, I don't think they lemon flavored they're just sort of um, a lemon color but it has lots and lots and lots of flowers on it which is really good all the way up there now the cucumbers absolutely fabulous look at this leaf look look how big that leaf is that is I've got big hands and this is just enormous and it's absolutely perfect the, the leaves it's just looking so healthy I'm so chuffed with this now the problem I have I've got plenty of flowers appearing but they're all most of them seem to be male flowers now you can tell a female flower there's a female flower because it's got a little fruit behind it and uh, I think there's another one, uh, oh, of course here, there's another one growing here. And I've just spotted one on a little tendril that's coming out. There's a female uh, flower as well. Now I, I b believe uh, that you are supposed to remove, if it hasn't got a, a fruit behind the flower, you're supposed to remove it because that is a male flower. And if you leave the male flowers on, it uh, causes the cucumbers to become bitter. So uh, you need to take the male flowers off. Here's another one here quite hard to hold the camera and see what I'm doing um, but yeah I've had lots and lots of male flowers which I've already removed and uh, not that many female flowers hello look at that that's the first time I've spotted this that's going to be a cucumber and that one too fabulous now here we have uh, my very first uh, cherry chili pepper uh, there it is that's a chili now, I'm having a bit of a, a mathematical equation issue, um, not so much with the chilies, because chilies are generally quite small anyway, but with the bell peppers, because the bell peppers are, um, they have this very thin, kind of, um, very thin, quite weak stem, yet bell peppers generally grow very big. So, um, <laughs> You know, I'm not sure whether I'm going to have to sort of start staking them uh, or tying them up. But the problem is I don't really want to be pushing, uh, you know, stakes into the soil anymore because the root system, I could really damage it. So um, I'm definitely open to any advice on that. But uh, the chili plants, that have got lots and lots of flowers. I don't know if they're going to show up. Hopefully they will. Um, everywhere you look, there's flowers, flowers and chilies now starting to appear. So that's quite exciting. I've never ever grown my own chilies um, before. So that's kind of cool. Right then, let's have a look outside. <clears throat> As you can see, it's 
looking incredibly um, green and uh, lots and lots is happening. Uh, the runner beans are now completely much, much taller than me. Now I have just noticed we've had a little infusion of black fly. Um, so if you can see them climbing down that branch there, I believe soapy water is the, the way with those. It doesn't look too extensive at the moment. Uh, I've noticed another bunch further over here somewhere. Um, but it's not too extensive at the moment, so I, hopefully I can nip it in the bud with some soapy water. I don't know um, if anybody's got any uh, other suggestions. Uh, the potatoes are just going mental. I have to step right back because I haven't got my wide angle lens on. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five bags there. And we've got, uh, these are five bags of rocket. These are um, what I planted, I think, in February time. And these I planted, planted a little bit later on. The Charlottes, they're just growing crazy. The Vivaldis, they're completely outgrown the pot. And I've literally, I've just backfilled them. So there's like soil everywhere, which is a bit of a pain, but uh, never mind. The, finally, the broad beans. We've actually got lots and lots of actual beans appearing. Look at the size of that one. Whopper. Fantastic. Um, now we have tried them. You, you can try them when they're very small. You can eat the whole thing. But apparently when they get bigger, then you just um, you split them open and you just eat the beans. But you have to, you either boil them for a long time or you can actually take the outer shells off apparently. So I've never really worked with um, broad beans. So this is a, a bit of a first for me. So uh, it's, it's all uh, a bit of an experiment. But uh, Square Foot Garden is just looking well, a bit mental really. <laughs> There's just stuff everywhere. We've got uh, carrots are just doing really well. Um, they're obviously growing nicely. I, I'll, I'll generally wait until they um, they sort of show up uh, or poke slightly out of the ground before I even consider harvesting them. Cabbage is doing okay. There's a few people that are interested in how the cabbages are doing in the grow bags. Um, now these are, these are Brunswick cabbages. Uh, they're a, quite a well-known heirloom and they're doing they're doing okay. They're not um, you know they're not super sized or anything like that but um, I have cut some of the lower leaves off because they did get a bit shabby uh, but in general I think they're doing okay and I, I presume they'll just carry on growing until they, they grow into like proper uh, cabbages if I allow them and uh, so they're good the onions are just going mental they're really really coming on nicely lots and lots of lettuce we've already harvested one two three four full lettuces and they were really nice um, those onions not doing particularly well but the kale uh, that's doing fabulously uh, spinach this is all spinach we've been harvesting that and this spinach here although this spinach is actually starting to get some seeds on it i'm not entirely sure what i need to do whether i need to cut that off or um, just let it go to seed because obviously you can collect the seeds from this because this is an heirloom um, but I've got some more spinach planted there more onions parsley how's that for parsley that's really come on lovely and that's a nice tasty parsley as well and the white beetroot uh, doing really well that's just I'm going to leave that there until that um, produces some nice big fruit now on the vertical climbing area we've got uh, Exploding cucumbers, very, very slow growing. Uh, we've got the uh, more runner beans, climbing French beans as well, and uh, more runner beans starting to take. And uh, same over here, more climbing French beans, and we've got some yellow runner beans as well, which are supposed to be very nice. Right then. Not a huge amount to scream and shout about. It's just all making progress at the moment. We are slowly starting to uh, to gather a crop from uh, what's growing. It's still playing the waiting game at the moment. Um, you know, I couldn't survive on just what's being grown in the garden right now, but it is slowly starting now to supplement um, the, the food that I'm buying. And, uh, you know, I mean, the ultimate goal for the website was to see or to determine whether you could grow enough food in a tiny little postage stamp garden. Uh, to you know basically survive on and uh, at the moment I'd have to say no um, but like I say ask me in the summer when we get our first harvest and uh, depending on how much we get and how much we can store uh, through the winter and you know obviously if we can grow enough that's going to feed us during the summer and uh, so we can store it in the winter then hopefully it's going to sort of subsidize the food well into next year um, that's the sort of plan I've got. 
Right then, that's it for the, this week. I'll probably, what I'll do, I, I did say I was going to do a gardening update every week, but I don't think there's any point of doing one every week because everything's obviously very slow growing. So I'll aim for fortnightly updates and uh, hopefully that'll, uh, you know, <laughs> at least each new video is going to be a little bit different to the one um, before it. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great rest of the week, whatever it is you're doing. Uh, happy gardening if you're getting into that right now and I'll catch you in the next video.